Hello and welcome. At the onset of our studies in microscopy, we often come across with two types of microscopic methods, the bright field and the dark field microscopy. In this video, I will try to explain the basic principle and the light path followed in these two methods as well as their advantages and disadvantages. We all got an idea about the two main advantages of using a microscope. The first one is the magnification power or microscope's ability to produce an enlarged image of a tiny sample. And the second one is equally important, the resolving power of microscope or its ability to make the finer details of the sample observable. So can we say that its ability of producing high resolution image at a high magnification is sufficient enough in making the microscopic world visible to the human eye? No, it's worthless without having sufficient contrast in the image. What is contrast then? Contrast is the clear difference of color or light intensity between the image and the adjacent background so that we can differentiate the finer structures from one another. Microscopic observation of living organisms or transparent organisms or unstained specimens suffers a lot from the lack of contrast, rendering those pieces nearly inobservable, invisible to human eyes. In microscopy, to enhance contrast in the image artificially, we practice a process known as staining, but the process of staining has its own set of limitations. The other alternative available to the microscopist is to significantly reduce the condenser's working numerical aperture by closing the iris diaphragm. So, is there any other way to enhance contrast in an image in microscopy? Answer is yes. As you all know, contrast is not an inherent property of the specimen but is dependent upon the interaction of specimen and light. So, by changing the illumination technique of the sample in microscopy, we can enhance the contrast. There are two microscopic methods known to us depending on the illumination techniques and these are the bright field microscopy and the dark field microscopy. Bright field microscopy is the simplest conventional illumination technique suitable for observing natural colors of a specimen or for observation of stained samples. The appearance of a bright field microscopy image will be like a dark sample on a bright background with a very little difference of color in it or in other words contrast. What is the reason of yielding such a dark image with a bright background? Let's find it out by understanding the light path followed in the bright field microscopy. The light path is extremely simple here and no additional component is required. A specimen which is placed on the stage of the microscope is being illuminated from below and observed from above. Light from the source is aimed at the condenser lens by a convex mirror. The condenser lens focuses a cone-shaped beam filled with light onto the specimen. Light passes through the specimen and then is collected by the objective lens situated above the stage. The image formed by the objective lens is then again magnified by the ocular lens or by the eyepiece lens to form an enlarged image into the user's eye. It is a very simple path, but what lies the problem? The problem lies in the transmission technique of illumination. The cone-shaped light focused onto the sample is being attenuated by the sample due to the differential transmission of the focused light. Firstly, a part of focused light is being reflected in opposite direction after striking the sample. Secondly, some portion of the light is absorbed by the stains and pigmentations or by the dense areas of the sample. So, the amount of light that, has, that is being focused on to the sample, some parts of it are reflected and absorbed and a very less amount of light succeeds to transmit through and is refracted by the sample which is collected by the objective lens. But along with this lesser amount of refracted light from the sample, a large portion of the light from the background is also collected by the objective lens. The light from the background passes directly without any kind of deviation from outside 
of the sample. The final image produced in bright field microscopy will have a dark sample and a bright background. Dark sample as it is formed with very little amount of refracted light from the sample and bright background as a comparatively large amount of undeviated and unscattered light enters the objective lens from the background. Whereas in case of dark field microscopy, the primary imaging goal is to enhance the contrast. Here, measures are taken to exclude the unscattered and undeviated beam of light from the background to enter into the objective lens and thus will not form part of the image. So, dark field microscopy will produce the appearance of almost back, black background with bright object in it and is essentially the complete opposite of the bright field illumination technique. Now let's see the light path followed in dark field microscopy to understand how unscattered light from the background of the sample is excluded and only the light that is scattered by the sample is allowed to form the final image. In this technique, a disc-like dark field patch top is used before the condenser lens. The stop can block the central portion of light coming from the source and leaves only a hollow cylindrical shape of light beam which will have a circular layer of illumination. Condenser lens collects this and focuses it onto the sample. But unlike the bright field technique, where light filled solid cone of light was focused onto the sample. In a dark field technique, the condenser lens focuses a hollow cone of light onto the sample. By this way, we can say that in dark field microscopy, the sample is not illuminated from below like bright field microscopy, but is illuminated from the sides at the plane of the sample. After illumination, if no sample is placed onto the stage, the light will move past the specimen plane and will spread again to form a hollow cone of light. In a dark field technology, the objective is made to sit in this dark hollow of the cone and as the light propagates through and past, simply the light will miss the objective lens and no rays will enter the objective. With no sample onto the stage, the entire field appears black. When a sample is placed onto the stage, the light strikes the sample at its sides and are scattered by it. These refracted and scattered light from the sample are then captured by the objective lens and are then used up to form a bright image of the sample. Before concluding, I would like to add some pros and cons of both the system. Dark field microscopy can create high contrast, high resolution images without the use of stain, which is particularly useful for viewing live transparent microorganisms or a smear from a tissue culture, which have got similar refractive indexes as their surroundings, making them invisible in ordinary light microscopy. Dark field microscopy is also useful in examining the external details of the sample, particularly the outlines or the edges than the internal structures. Whereas, bright field technique yields low contrast image for biological and cellular samples as well as low optical resolution due to limitation of light. This technique is not suitable for viewing living specimens but needs to be fixed and stained prior to imaging but the simplicity of the technique is a huge benefit and is the main reason for its popularity in school and college labs preparation of slides for dark field microscopy viewing is its main limitation you need to take special care to make uniform thickness of the specimen and you have to be very careful in keeping the slides free from the dust and air bubbles as they can affect the accuracy of the image. Dark field microscopy method is followed both in light and electron microscope and also has regained its popularity when combined with other illumination techniques such as fluorescence. Thanks for watching. Thanks for being with me.